in this lecture we are going to learn about member functions of class okay so we will learn about member functions so what are member functions so to understand that let's see our previous example of vectors okay a class vector and point so we observed how some functions are so closely associated with a point so let's take that example so let's see this code this piece of code so we have a class point okay where a point is defined by a x coordinate and a y coordinate okay so this is a class point it has two public attributes okay they are double x comma y okay then you have a vector a vector consists of two points okay and we already have a class point so this vector class this uses point start and point end okay so this is the start point this is the end point this is your vector start and end so now what happens is that we want that okay we want a method that puts an offset in the point okay so there is a point x comma y we want an offset a function that brings an offset to the x and y coordinate so x becomes x plus delta x and y becomes y plus delta y so how we will do it using a function so we write a function offset vector we want to change the content of the of the data members of class vector that is we want to change the coordinates of the point so we are passing reference to the vector okay so vector ampersand v the reference changes the content in the memory location of v itself okay so double offset x and double offset y so we do v dot start dot x is equal to v dot start dot x plus offset x similarly v dot end dot x is equal to v dot end dot x plus offset x so this piece of code brings about this transformation okay so this transformation is brought by offset vector so because we are changing the object so we pass by reference okay but in another case print vector so we are not changing the attributes of the class okay so only thing we are doing is we are using it okay so we are not changing anything so we just write vector v okay and then we use v dot start dot x we print out v dot start dot y then this point is linked to the v dot end dot x and v dot end dot y okay so this tells now that we are doing another operation that is of just printing the vector so we don't need a reference to that object you can pass just a, a simple copy of that okay so this is fine so now what happens is let's try to see so this is good so we what we observe from here is that some functions are very closely associated with a particular class isn't it so our offset vector and the print vector were very much closely associated with that class so the c++ developers what they thought why can't we provide methods okay or the functions in that class itself okay so what we saw here is that in both of these void offset vector and print vector what we are doing we are passing the class object as a refer as an argument okay so the object we are trying to pass as argument okay so what happens is in both whenever we want to change one class object we need to pass it to the function okay so if you want to change the uh, the class object then you need to pass it as a reference okay if you don't want to change just use it you pass it as an object okay a copy so this far it's good but what happens is because they are so much associated with the class vector so why not provide these functions in the class itself so that you don't need 
to pass this class object as argument okay so directly the those functions will be associated with your class okay and c++ provides this feature of functions okay member functions so now let's try to see okay so it's good that we can pass it as parameter to functions but let's try to see this so now what happens methods are functions which are part of the class okay so we will want so what we want is now we would have some method of our own or functions so vector now is the object and you can again access the function using vec dot print so this tells us that print is the name of the function that is printing the start point and the end point okay so let's try to see how it is done so let's see here so this is the method name as suggested here now let's see observe how some functions so again a very closely related so we will see now we have two methods vector dot print and vector dot offset okay so these now arguments can be passed to these methods so what happens you can think of these functions as so this is one object so vec1 and this is another object vec2 so both of them have the x and y coordinate of the start and x and y coordinate of the end point so now what happens in pictorially you can think of it as vec1 the object having two buttons you press print so it will print the vector for you if you press offset along with its argument then what will it do it will offset the points of that vector okay so this is there so now let's try to see how we define the methods okay so let's try to see how we define so very simple okay so there is nothing very big about it so you have a class vector so these are the public we will see the meaning of this public attribute but it has two member data members point start and point end this we already know next what happens is we see void offset so we are defining now a uh, function okay a member function in the class itself okay so void offset so this is there inside the function and because it is in the class itself you don't need to pass the class object as argument okay so it just you just need to pass the things that are needed for the logic of that class double offset x double offset y so now start dot x is getting incremented by offset x your start dot y is getting incremented by offset y similarly the end points also for print you just need to print start dot x start dot y and end dot x end dot y so you see so we just define the functions inside the class and now you can use so if i define a vec1 then i can access this offset using offset member function using vec1 dot offset and then I can pass the argument. So X and Y. Okay. I can pass it as argument. Similarly, vec1 dot print I can call. Okay. So this tells that okay, this function is a member function of class vec1 of the class vector, and you can use the dot operator to call this. Okay. So this is there. So now let's try to see. So these are the methods now fields can be accessed so we saw how the fields can be accessed but let's try to see something more okay so we have used till now that okay we have one more class if you remember so we have a point is also a class so when you write a good c++ code an object oriented code so when you are doing an offset so this offset is basically finally being done to the point class isn't it so when we are doing it so we are doing it to offset to the point class that is x and y coordinate are getting incremented so we remove this method of offset into 
the class point okay so let's try to see so we move this method here okay to the class point so where we have now class point so public double x comma y so you have now a public method so void offset okay here it's defined offset x and offset y so where x is now x plus offset y is y plus offset so this how it helps and print also is defined because we are printing the point actually so see out x and y so this helps us that okay now your class point itself is providing these two functions so let's try to see so what happens now here now let's try to see so what happens here is point start and end are there again we are writing an offset method for our vector so this in turn what it does so start is an attribute a data member of vector class so start dot offset because this is uh, an object of type point so start dot offset we pass offset x offset y similarly for end dot offset we pass offset x offset y so this helps us in making the code smaller simpler and more object oriented print so just simply do start dot print then you put c out arrow end dot print so your lines of code are decremented it looks much more beautiful and understandable so that is the beauty of object oriented programming okay so you can reuse the code you can okay so this is there so now basically what we studied that when you have some functions that are very closely associated with your class you can write them inside the class itself so that they become your member functions and then your member functions will help you in doing the work that are required for your particular class object. So I hope you understand this. Thanks a lot.